that the thing that's so important about what you're doing with digital is that it goes so far beyond slogans and partisanship. It doesn't look at a specific program, digital technology and education. It looks at the whole paradigm, how you can change learning for kids. Because you want students, we all understand this, no matter their grade or no matter where they live, to have the very best access possible to good teachers, great teachers, and the content, whether they need remediation or acceleration. And digital allows that personalized learning to take place. Here's what we know. We know that teachers can't do it all on your own. You can. I was a teacher years ago. You don't have the time. That's the big key, I think, the time. You don't have the tools. And sometimes, contrary to some of our systems, you don't have the support from the leadership of the state or the system to do what you need to do around technology. And I don't believe that you can do it on your own. I think it's impossible, if you will, to figure out what you need to buy and if it's going to work and you hear the hype from the company and you don't really, you can't be for sure it's going to work well in the classroom. I mean, it seems like the companies don't have an avenue to communicate well with teachers or with students or with academics, and therefore they end up making something in a, a vacuum. Entrepreneurs can't do it on their, on their own, and they actually don't have access or knowledge of the market and what goes on in the classroom day to day. Although many of the newer generation of ed tech creators have been teachers themselves, and I find that fascinating and very exciting for those of you who are in the field, that there's this opportunity to do something that you know needs to be done, and find somebody who can help you with the business model and take it to a company and try to launch it. Here's what we know, that digital learning developed with students and teachers in mind and applied appropriately, and we've got data kind of to prove this, can increase personal learning, and it can break down tremendous barriers of geography and wealth. For the first time in my lifetime, a zip code should not be the determinant of what kind of education any kid in America can access. Digital learning increases the opportunity for personal learning. The uh, formative assessments that you get in real time that allows you, with the help of technology, to do individualized learning plans for each kid based on where they are at this point in time and how to feed that information to mom and dad. You don't come calling and swearing at you when the grades come out because they had no idea that their child wasn't doing what he or she needed to do. You all know the drill. I think the whole opportunity expands instructional options for you, the teachers. But again, the policymakers have got to figure out a way to give you time to learn about the content that's available. When it comes to developing effective tools for teaching and learning, way too often people who use the tools, as we've said, don't have the opportunity to do the input to the technologist. And the other piece of that equation that I'm such a part of now nationally is that the investors all over the country who want to be part of this transformation of education and want to invest in the ideas that teachers and others have around the tech, they take what they see in the <coughs> pitch meeting from the technologist, and they never ask the question, well, what do teachers and students in rural classrooms think about this? Will it work to benefit learners and teachers? And so they sell their products without that input, and then you get them in the classroom because somebody's been on a boat with a big company and been lying and died and decided to sign a contract for procurement because that whole system across the country is so convoluted. And then there they come, down to your school with your classroom. And you get them and you think, who in the world decided to buy this for my kids? And they end up in the box they came in or stuck in the closet and nobody really has. I've seen enough closets full of boxes to know that in North Carolina it's true. And I think that's the missing piece. And people all over the country are talking about what Learn Launch is doing and what we're doing here with real teachers. So we want to continue to develop the structure, steps if you will, 
that can actually bring the three groups together, the educators and the students when that's appropriate, the technologists who have the great ideas, whether it's a teacher or somebody who understands what needs to go on in classrooms with input from others, and the investors, that's the big piece, because I think at the end of the day that will help your school systems with other kind of resources you need into a kind of a, a room, and a virtual room, if you will, and work together to, to come up with an app or tool or a program or content that might make a real serious educational difference. Doesn't get any better than that at all. And it's just simple, but it's relationships and collaboration that make this happen.